I'm very happy to stand here on behalf of the entire uh, PFF team. So let me tell you a little bit about hip fractures. Uh, so they occur quite a lot uh, yearly. Uh, 1.6 million already uh, worldwide, which is projected to more than triple uh, in the next two decades. And uh, because this is mostly happening to older, frail adults, uh, the global burden is estimated already now at almost 2 million healthy years lost uh, in people's lives. And we have a high increased burden of disability and almost a fourfold um, uh, increase in care dependency. This is really something that we want to improve. We want to give these uh, patients the best possible care pathways after hip fracture. So a hip fracture is not a minor hiccup uh, in somebody's life. So mobility really plunges to zero. Uh, these people cannot uh, stand. So if they are to get out of bed again, they need surgery. Unfortunately, most patients in uh, most countries in Europe, they will uh, get surgery. But after the surgery, 20 to 30 percent across Europe uh, have a catastrophic cat uh, trajectory, and they die within a year. Of the survivors, about half does not regain their pre-fracture uh, function, and many cannot return to their uh, previous residence and need long-term care. Clemens already mentioned that, that most of the uh, patients really want to avoid this. The remaining half does re reasonably well, and they achieve approximate level of their pre-fracture function. If we are to move most people a little bit up in these trajectories and give them the best possible trajectory given their uh, personal circumstances, we need to understand where these trajectories come from. So what is behind, or the factors that are behind these uh, trajectories, so that hopefully we can um, um, use that knowledge to uh, improve care pathways. But at the moment we don't. We don't have enough information about these trajectories. We don't understand enough why people uh, end up on the trajectory that they are following. Unfortunately, until very recently, most of the knowledge, as we have heard from uh, many of the cohorts today, was b largely based on gait speed and step count. And that is not really informative enough to help us understand why people are on the trajectory they're on. So it doesn't sufficiently inform us uh, how we can do better. So to be able to offer better treatment and tailored rehabilitation to these individual patients, we need to understand what the trajectory they're on and why, and preferably as early as possible after the uh, fracture and the surgery. So we know that DMOs uh, can be reliably estimated also in this cohort of old and frail patients. Uh, we've seen that uh, in the uh, technical validation study. If you want to know more about that particular part, please see Martin Berger's poster in the C4 area. Uh, so what can daily life mo digital mobility uh, outcomes offer to this uh, patient cohort? So, we started diving into this question already before the mobilized uh, clinical data became available, and we used pooled data from four earlier cohorts in both Germany and Norway. And this uh, figure uh, just shows one example of a DMO, namely the daily maximum number of steps within a walking bout, so how long can these patients uh, walk continuously before taking a break. And we fitted uh, estimated one-year trajectories uh, using quantile regressions through all these data points. And what you see here, and I have to point it because otherwise you won't even see it, there's this little dark line almost at the bottom. That is uh, about 50%, uh, the 50th percentile, so that's the sort of the average um, where people are. And they, what you see here is they reach their uh, maximum number of continuous steps quite early, uh, like four weeks after surgery. After that, most of them don't get a lot better on this particular DMO. But this is not true for all the patients. So 20, uh, the other 50% does continue to, continue to improve. About 25% of those uh, until approximately half, uh, half a year after the surgery. But there's a whole 10% of these older, frailer patients that continue to improve throughout the entire year after surgery uh, in this particular DMO. So there is, there is so much more potential for these patients to recover more than what we have seen before. So what did we do in uh, mobilized with the mobilized data? So we enrolled almost uh, 600 patients across four clinical sites in Norway, Germany, and France. And we recruited them at different, different time points after the hip fraction, after the surgery. 
and we have about one-fifth uh, in the first three uh, periods after the surgery, and then the remaining two-fifths in the second half of the first year. So it's a pretty good uh, database to really start looking into how these people are progressing uh, after uh, the hip fracture. Here is two examples basically to show you um, that both in number of daily uh, steps and the average walking speed, uh, mobility continues to improve. Also, after we, in most countries, have stopped treating these patients, they don't get years and years of rehabilitation after the hip fracture. It very often stops quite a few months after the surgery. So there is more potential for these patients. So how do DMOs compare to the more typical clinical assessments? Um, what I'm showing here is three uh, digital mobility outcomes, walking duration, number of steps, and number of turns, and how they compare and how they correlate with three uh, typical clinical tests, namely the short physical performance battery, the gate, four meter gate speed, and the timed up and go. And what you see here is that these uh, high correlations uh, indicate that we can monitor patients remotely, uh, so we don't have to, have to get them back into the clinic. Uh, every single time we, are, uh, we want to know how they're doing. And it also shows that it provides valuable information about function also later in the recovery process, not just uh, early on. And this is really important for us to know. We can also look at relative change in DMOs, uh, because we saw in these earlier trajectories that not everybody is on the same trajectory, not everybody um, um, recovers in the same way. So here, um, I'm just starting with walking speed. This is from the, one of our DMOs, but this is what everybody has been looking at before us. And what you see is that throughout each of these phases, this is again data from um, estimated trajectories using uh, quantile regression, you see that the walking speed does increase, but it increases only a little bit. 7% of a very, very low walking speed is still a very, very low walking speed. So this parameter, although it's telling us something, it's not very sensitive to what's uh, happening in the recovery of mobility. Then if you compare that to just five other uh, DMOs, you see that these pick up changes and improvements uh, already three days after the surgeries, people start getting better that early already in the recovery process. And especially uh, daily walking distance and number of steps, that's the bottom two, you really see how sensitive they are to the small improvements that we have also in the beginning uh, in the um, uh, recovery process. So it's really important that we use these DMOs to really give us information, different information about different parts of the story at different time points in the recovery, also a, half a year after the surgery. So again, come and uh, uh, talk to the experts in the um, poster area. So, Two overall takeaway messages. The first one, the potential for mobility improvement in hip fracture patients continues much longer than we knew beforehand. And it's even longer than we expected. We had hoped and we saw in the clinic that people tended to improve uh, longer than uh, we gave them credit for. And this has important implications and opportunity for care pathways. We can actually give people longer rehabilitation trajectories. It also gives us the ability to benchmark what was not possible before, and not just individual patients, but we can also look at the success of acute treatments, the uh, success of rehabilitation after the acute uh, stage, but also healthcare institutions and even entire healthcare systems. Then some more uh, specific takeaway messages for trialists and pharma. So first of all, hip fracture patients can be measured in a technically and clinically valid and reliable way. DMOs that capture volume, pace, and pattern, you've seen several examples uh, today, this morning, uh, they, they are ready to be introduced, they are ready to be used uh, in uh, trials. And they should be introduced from our uh, perspective because they really inform so much better about uh, the, the, the success of the treatment and the planning of care pathways than just the gate speed and the number of steps that we have been looking at so far. And then also the use of DMOs that capture cadence and variability, we're still looking into that, and that's an ongoing process. We also have several takeaway messages for healthcare staff, patients, not in the least, and their families and caregivers. So to start with, uh, mobility assessment allows early identification of recovery trajectory, 
And this paves the way for individualized follow-up that is evidence-based and more, hopefully, and likely, more effective. Mobility assessment uh, a few weeks after surgery can provide really valuable feedback to orthopedic surgeons and geriatricians about how successful the treatment in the acute phase was. Similarly, mobility assessment maybe two, three months after uh, the hip fracture gives valuable feedback to physiotherapists and other healthcare staff about how the rehabilitation process is going and if there's both a need and a potential to continue rehabilitation and what would be the best um, uh, kind of intervention, the best kind of treatment to give uh, these people. And then last but definitely not least, um, mobility assessment enables us all to give immediate tailored feedback to the patients about how they're doing, how are they performing. We can help them with evidence-based information how in each of these particular individual situations they can achieve continued improvement of mobility because we know the potential in many of these patients is there. So that's really incredibly important. And then ultimately, the, our goal is that we can provide better informed, evidence-based guidelines for hip fracture treatment and rehabilitation for a much longer time after the surgery. Thank you.